Welcome back to the PwC channel. It's been a while guys and today we have a match from another league. It's not PwC but we have a familiar name here called Choker Layton. You will no notice him if you've watched our videos from last season. He was the winner of our Johto League and he's also participating in this new league called DPL where he is facing off with coach Harry in week one. And this is gonna be interesting. I told Leighton I would be willing to record this battle for old times sake because Leighton is always so entertaining to record. I thought why not give it a try and that's what we're gonna do here. Alright so the matchup is Leighton bringing Weezing Galar, Lickitung, Pangoro, Garchomp, Rotomwash and Tangrowth. Meanwhile on the other hand we have Harry with Ditto Pidgeot, which I, I, I would assume that must be Pidgeot Mega, Gyarados, Raichu Alola, Horlucha, and Tapu Koko. Alright, I will just tell those guys I'm ready, because I am. And uh, yeah, so looking at the matchup, I mean, it doesn't really seem like <laughs> Harry does have any switch in for Garchomp. He doesn't really have any defensive mon to begin with. Maybe Garchomp could be defensive if it is like a defensive spread with Intimidate. And Tapu Koko can be played somewhat bulky with recovery, but yeah, this is just basically a hi hyper offense team, which makes sense. Raichu Alola benefiting from the electric terrain. And uh, Leighton, I mean, yeah, he's uh, got a little bit more of a balanced team going on. He's got a uh, solid defensive core with Weezing, Lickitung and Tangrowth and prob possibly also the Rotom. And then two huge physical breakers in <laughs> in uh, Garchomp and Pangoro. Yeah, that's me. I am now the Hafen City Skitty because I recently moved to Hamburg, Germany, which is why I have a new name. Everything is new for me. So let's see what happens here. I, I think um, Rotom is a very possible lead for Leighton just because he will get a very free slow Volt switch off because Harry doesn't have a ground type with him. So yeah, that's something I could see leading for Leighton. And uh, for Harry I would expect something like possibly Coco. Coco would make sense to me as a lead. Also Mega Pidgeot just because that thing always likes to get off its mega as soon as possible. So yeah, those are some leads I could see. Also Ditto is, is always a possible lead. And uh, yeah, so let's see what, what's taking these guys so long. They are chatting like mad here. You, you don't see the chat in the video, but we already have like two pages of chat here. Let's see what I'm saying. They are talking about the matchup. Harry is saying he will send out the funny, whatever that means. Joker Layton is asking me if I am half in city skitty, which I am, yes, I'm half in city skitty. So, ah, meanwhile, something finally happens. Alright, so Layton, both guys are surprising me a little bit with the lead. So Layton sends out the guard jump, which makes sense, probably, possibly trying to set up Stealth Rocks turn one. And Harry decides to go with a Gyarados. So yeah, that's, this is not, not a terrible matchup, honestly, for Harry. Could have gone way worse had Leighton just decided to lead off with the Rotom, because then, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that could have been worse for him. But yeah, this is, this is fine for Harry, honestly. Definitely excited to see what he will decide to do here. But yeah, one, one thing I... Um, wanted to n to mention is that um, it doesn't appear like Leighton deals all too well with um, the combination of Coco and a Raichu so that's definitely something that's dangerous for him so once this Garchomp is gone um, this Raichu is pretty much free to spam Rising Voltage the only thing that would really take it then would be a Assault Vest Tangrove probably but yeah we'll see what Leighton decided to bring but yeah, other than that, I think um, 
Leighton pretty much has his bases covered. Weezing should deal decently well with Falucha probably. Rotom deals with Pidgeot pretty perfectly. And Gyarados, yeah, wouldn't want to. I mean, Tangrowth is good against it, Rotom is good against it. Yeah, this is looking like the matchup, I would say, looks a little bit in Leighton's, or the team building, I should say, looks a little bit in Leighton's favor, but we'll see. One thing you should uh, know about Leighton is that whenever this guy enters a Pokemon battle, you can never really predict what's going to happen because <laughs> yeah, uh, that guy is a little bit of a maniac sometimes, likes to build crazy sets, isn't afraid to try some wonky shit from time to time. And yeah, so I'm definitely excited to see what he decided to bring here. Alright, so Harry reveals that he is a Life Orb Gyarados, packing the Ice Fang, which makes a lot of sense for to me, just because it deals with Guard Jump, and yeah, it's also super effective against Tangrove, even though it still isn't the strongest move in the world, but, 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 seeing as that th this did 41%, which is not, not that little, honestly, I, I would have thought it would do less, to a physically defensive Tangrowth, which is why I um, assume at this point that this must be uh, or is likely to be a salt vest Tangrowth, which just makes sense honestly against all these electric type attackers on um, Harrison's team. So, yeah. Alright, so we do see Pidgeot here getting off its Mega on a double switch, putting up Tailwind, which, um <laughs> yeah, this Licky Tongue doesn't really care about anything thing is super especially bulky with um, Eviolite, so this will not be a problem, this will now wish probably. Oh, alright, so Leighton decides to let it get low for no reason. Now he definitely has to hope that he doesn't get confused here, or crit, yeah, <laughs> that was just unnecessary. That could have been played safer by Leighton, and he pays the price for it here, losing his Licky Tank for no reason really. There was really no reason not to go just go for the safe wish there when he clicked knockoff, but yeah, that's fine. He baits out some more toxic damage. Very, very cheeky, Leighton, I see you. And yeah, I mean, I guess Harry is gonna U-turn out here. At least that's what he should do. And yeah, this Rotom is taking considerable damage from these Hurricanes. I mean, granted that was a crit. But there you also see the problem, yeah, this, this is just always such a free free momentum Volt Switch for Leighton whenever he gets that Rotom in, so yeah, that's annoying. And uh, we do see Tangrove now. And yeah, I still assume that this Tangrove pretty much has to be um, a Salt Vest, I would say. Just because can't really rely on Garchomp to be his, his electric type answer, especially given the fact that Coco is part fairy, so it always has that secondary step to hit the Garchomp really hard, and yeah. Alright, so he decides to go into Coco and eating a Sludge Bomb for his troubles. So yeah, l seeing as this Sludge Bomb only did 45% only did to Coco, which isn't the most naturally bulky thing in the world, I assume that this Bo Co Coco is indeed a rather bulky build, or this Tangrove does just doesn't have any special attack whatsoever, and he decides to go for Deadling Gleam. All right, so yeah, <laughs> this confirms two things. This definitely confirms the Assault Vest now, which makes sense, and uh, also means that Coco is going to be gone, and um, this Raichu is going to want to make use of that electric terrain as soon as it can. But then again, just looking at it, I think unless this Garchomp is Choice Scarf, which it still might be, or this Pangoro would be a random Scarf set, the um, Raichu probably just outspeeds the entire team anyway without the terrain needed. But yeah, alright, so <laughs> that's interesting. So <laughs> Harry reveals that he's not a choice Scarf Ditto and <laughs> catches the Rotom off guard with that. Uh, Rotom probably assuming that he's uh, locked into the Sludge Wave, which he was uh, not. He did was able to switch up moves to Giga Drain here, which is interesting, honestly. 
All right. And either, I don't know, did um, Wiesengalar reveal that it's not levitate because he just attempted to earthquake a Wiesengalar, which is not something you usually see. Yeah, oh well. So now we see Garchomp on the field here, taking a little bit of damage from the EQ. Which is an interesting choice, honestly, um, switching in Garchomp on Tangrowth. But yeah, it might be... might be... Uh, what's Layton doing here? Uh, he's trying to Toxic Stall the um, Ditto. Is that really gonna work? Honestly, I doubt it a little bit. Lay, um, Harry should switch out soon, but he doesn't. He decides to sack Ditto instead. Now that was really not necessary, <laughs> but he decided to do it anyway, which will now even up the score for all. But, I mean, now, now that we are in this position, look at uh, Mega Pidgeot and look at Layton's team. There's not really anything left that wants to take Hurricanes. So it's a good thing for Layton that he was able to um, weaken the Pidgeot early in the game. So yeah, this um, Gyarados doesn't really pressure him all that much because he has still has the Tangrove here. But then again, I mean, after a Dragon Dance, this is still nothing, nothing to take lightly for Layton, just because. Oh, he goes for our EQ, but now he learned. Hopefully, <laughs> that Weezing does indeed ha have Levitate, so it can't be hit by ground-type moves most of the time. So Levitate is usually the ability that you see run most on uh, Weezing. So yeah, maybe he can get a flinch here. No, he can't. So yeah, this, this Poison and the Life Orb will mean that he will die next turn. That's unfortunate. He should probably go for a Ice Fang here, just predicting the switch out by Layton, knowing Layton. Layton likes to play shenanigans, so he's probably gonna switch into either Garchomp or probably more likely Tangrove here to um, heal up the hit and make Gyarados die to the recoil. But the good thing about um, Layton going into Tangrove from Harry's perspective is that means that um, Tangrove is now on the field and he will get a free Hurricane with Pidgeot afterwards, which um, Layton doesn't have any switch-ins left for, so that would mean that he will have to sack another Mon, unless one of his physical attackers, Pangoro or Garchomp, turns out to be Scarfed. He would be forced to make a sack. So, we'll see what happens. I think there's really no reason for Harry to n not just click Ice Fang here. Yeah. So let's see. No, but he doesn't decide to do that. He goes for Waterfall, which is um, a little bit bad in just in the sense that I'm not sure if Tangrove is now in range of Hurricane. I mean, after the Ice Fang damage, he definitely would have been, but given the fact that he's Assault Vest and really re can be really, really bulky on the special side, I'm excited to see if this Hurricane will even kill from this range. If it does kill, he will be able to even up the score now, but it looks like Garchomp will become a really big problem in the endgame for Harry. Because it's still at a respectable amount of HP. And yeah, it's just something that can't be taken out in one hit by any of these mons that are left on the field. And it can just lock itself. If it's scarfed, it will just lock itself into Outrage and win the game. Right, he decides to sack off the Weezing. That's interesting. And now, he if he has got a Scarfer, he will reveal it here. But if he does not, he will probably go back into Tangrove. Or even go just go into Garchomp, hoping to live a hit. But yeah, that's going to be interesting here. The Halucha, if it gets a Sword Stance off, will possibly still be able to win this game. Alright, now if this is Scarf Garchomp, this will just win the game with Outrage here. And uh, if not, 
that's gonna be more interesting honestly because then oh it's not all right so ah but it does have sta scale shot so yeah that should probably be gg honestly um because now it can just eq the right shoe uh, or unless the right shoe is focus sash obviously that is still a possibility but um if it's not it will just die to garchomp's eq here <laughs> it does have extreme speed no, that's super interesting. So yeah, that actually means that he's able to revenge kill here, and um, that means that Halusha will probably just win the game with acrobatics from here. Um, I mean, honestly, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare to pre predict any sets at this point, but <laughs> um, yeah, it would would seem likely to me that um, Harry can just. He definitely shouldn't switch directly into Halucha. Yeah, he should. That's that's the right thing he's doing here. Yeah, sack of the right shoe, and now just go into Halucha and clean up with um, acrobatics or flying press, whatever. Doesn't really matter. I would. Um, yeah, that's GG. Well, that was that was a cool game. Definitely a close game. Um, I'm interested to see if flying press kills. Oh, he's got sash. Interesting. <laughs> Wow, that got really close. That got really close. The focus sash Pangoro almost came in clutch here. <laughs> oh, Leighton said GG because he thought he won the game. Now that's interesting to me. I, <laughs> I mean, obviously he knew that um, he has the focus sash, but just um, I guess he assumed that uh, Pangoro was able to just one shot a Holucho with Thunder Punch, but. Honestly, T-Punch is not that strong of a move, so... Yeah, that was a really close game. That's a cool recording, honestly, to start off the season of DPL. Congrats to Harry for winning the game. And congrats to Leighton as well for putting up a good fight and making this an entertaining match. I'm sure he's gonna bounce back as the season continues. Alright, guys, that was a fun thing for me, once again, to record a match after a long hiatus here. And uh, yeah, with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one.